Welcome to the Fight Life Podcast. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm well. How about you, buddy? I'm good, thank you. Really nice to meet you. I've been a fan for a while now. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I love your content. Um, I, let's get started. I was looking through your Instagram bio, and it says you have seven black belts in martial arts. This is correct. And I am very curious in what martial arts specifically, oh, martial arts specifically they are. Okay. Um, my first one was um, under Chuck Norris's Tong Sudo system. Okay. And after that, I got one in karate, and then Ed Parker, Ken Po, and then kickboxing under Joe Lewis. And then WTF and ITF black belts. Um, I have the Kuku one and the one from ITF. And then a um, equivalent, it's a Muay Thai kickboxing hybrid under Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham. He was Benny the Jet Yakita's protege and okay. um, the top, top strikers ever. A lot of my kicking style came from him. He was lead leg kicking. Muay Thai guys back in the 70s, 80s. So black belt under him and uh, at seven, and I am a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well. Okay, wow, that's really impressive. And at what age did you get your first black belt? I got my first one when I was 12. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. And um, from what age did you start with uh, your training? I started when I was six, and I would train for hours every day. Mm -hmm. from about from about the age of 10 once i turned 10 it's all i wanted to do was martial arts so as soon as i came home i would practice martial arts my mom would take me to the karate school and i'd come home and practice more martial arts mm -hmm. uh, from age um eighth grade around 12 and on my mom mother would just drop me off at the karate school and i'd be there and my instructors would take me home so i i, I grew up my childhood was in martial arts when I was six, I would start watching Bruce Lee movies, and that's all I wanted to do was be like Bruce Lee. He was always my my motivation and my idol, mostly not just because the amazing physical specimen he is, but because of his philosophy. And from a young age, I always connected martial arts and being a philosopher, I always saw that to be a great martial arts master, you need to be a great philosopher of life and teaching. And that's why I've always been related it, my life towards being Bruce, not being Bruce, but picking up to where I, I'm trying to pick up where he left off with the martial arts mindset, trying to continue his work forward. I see. So would you say that your philosophy in the martial arts today is still closely related to Bruce Lee's philosophy or did you create kind of your own? Um, I, I combine... a. I never specifically said I want to be Bruce Lee's philosophy, mm -hmm. but I've kind of picked up, I feel I've picked up to where he left off, where Bruce Lee was saying, to be a martial arts master, you have to know everything. To be a martial artist, you have to know everything. To me, it is to be a martial arts master, you need to be able to perfect technique in everything. It's not good enough to me to know mixed martial arts, a little bit of everything. I feel that every, if you are a dedicated martial artist, you should be training and giving it your all to perfect every style individually and then combining it in your own creative form of style. As Bruce Lee said, having no way as way and I think to have no way is way, you need to first understand and focus on everything individually, every individual style, perfect it. And then you combine everything due to your individual personality. I see. So is that kind of your, like your definition of a martial artist or do you have like a really defined definition that, of? Yeah, that is my definition of what I feel martial artists should be. Mm -hmm. But not just the physical techniques, but under, also understanding is every different martial arts style teaches you something internally about yourself. You know, like Olympic style Taekwondo is a lot about timing. So mm -hmm. to me, you want to 
and how timing works in, in sport, in martial arts, you understand how time applies to your life. Mm -hmm. Let's see. In, in say jujitsu, you got to know when to hold on and when to let go and when to transition. That to me, that, that application of technique it applies to life. You need to know what to hold on dearly to and you need to know when to let go and wait and readjust. Mm -hmm. Every different style has different techniques and those different techniques are taught differently, but every single one of those different techniques applies to some teaching for your life. It is the ultimate philosophy. It, it doesn't matter what you are going through in life, martial arts, if you're a trained martial artist, you have the answers. I think you would agree with the statement that like every martial art has, it, has its flaws. So in order to get a full understanding of like life and martial arts in general, you need to learn some different styles or a lot of different styles just to completely fill that circle, if that makes sense. A hundred percent. It's mm -hmm. martial arts. It's the best philosophers know everyone's philosophy. The best roots. I, I, I love religion. I love spirituality. But I see that there's a big issue in organized religion where you can only follow this way. Yes. Well, someone someone following this way, maybe there's some things that are helping them, but maybe this religion over here has something that will complete them. Mm -hmm. I feel that that is a, a huge issue in society across the world is everybody only sticks to what they know. And then they're like, well, for some reason, things aren't working. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. And eventually it's going to work instead of like, hey, like martial arts teaches me, Joe Lewis taught me, if your jab's not working, your sidekick's not working, it's not the move, it's because you're not applying it properly. So to apply it properly, you gotta apply it maybe differently and you mm -hmm. need to understand how to apply it differently. But if we're only focused on one way all the time of applying one way, it, it, we're never going to get anywhere. What's the saying that um, uh, uh, doing the same thing repeatedly and expecting the same results it, is, it, uh, what, what, what's the saying? Do you know oh, what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah, like the uh, practice makes perfect. No, perfect practice makes perfect. Is that cool. kind of what you're talking about? Well, or? that one that applies into it, but repeating, mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the exact same result by doing the same thing and so Oh, waiting. yeah, yeah. The Bruce yes. Lee quote. That's what it is. It's insanity doing the same the same thing and expecting the same result when it's not working but expecting it that's insanity and i feel religion does that and martial arts does that i have an issue with um the guy i love them all everything has something valuable to teach and everyone has something that should be thrown away and that's why mm -hmm. i believe a bruce lee meant having no way as way the things that are going to work for me aren't going to work for everybody else and vice versa but the only way to know that is to fully understand every style, you know? And are there like styles you haven't trained in that you are looking forward or are still planning on training? Or do you think um, you have a good understanding? I, I, I love to do judo and I think that I'm close to, like if I was to test, I, I've taught myself judo. I know all 67 throws. Mm -hmm. throws. So I like to, after my, my jiu-jitsu black belt's done, I'd like to go in, in judo because I really love. Do you think like, are, are there things in the judo philosophy that you think you haven't learned yet, so to say? Because it, since it's also a Japanese system with like karate and I don't know if you have done Japanese jiu-jitsu. I, I, I think at this point in my career, they, there's nothing more. I mean, there's always something new to learn. Of course, but I'm yeah. In my career where I am, I am working to, to have my own philosophy and my, my own way of the martial arts and stuff. I've, I feel that I'm at the point where I've taken enough. So now mm -hmm. I can be at the part where I can truly, truly express myself through my martial arts, physicality and- I see. Right, that's right now what I am focused on is my, my application. What would you say like your main style is? Would it be karate since that's the first one you did or? Um, I, I, well, I guess it, it depends on what I'm, doing if i'm striking kickboxing is always going to be my favorite um, I, I think yeah and kickboxing is the absolute best for self-defense and, and for application in in i think kickboxing is the only martial art that 100 percent transfers from sport to street it's the only one that's 100 percent will work in both 
Yes, I agree. But I agree. Uh, when I do like expressing my creativity lately, I've been playing around with a lot of jujitsu work, work, working to choreograph jujitsu moves that look like a dance. Um, I, I love to trick. Tricking really pushes me not just physically but creatively to choreograph different ways of putting moves and tricks together. Yeah, I was going to ask that, like your uh, Instagram and TikTok content is mostly like tricking or uh, pad work. And is that, I was wondering if that is your main focus in training in general also. Um, so when I train, I train everything I every week. I, I train tricking, kicking, paddles, taekwondo, literally mm -hmm. everything that I know I get through in a week, um, mm -hmm. different, different things. Yes. But when it comes to the social media stuff, I'm, I, I, uh, I'm just now starting to get a little bit better at pushing my, my philosophy with it. So I'm trying to just do one little piece at a time instead of like everything all at once. I agree. I think that's also the best way to push out content. Like if you want to go really in depth and stuff like that, I don't think it would be good for social media since a lot of people just enjoy the, the flashiest techniques or the fanciest tricks and don't necessarily stick around for like the more philosophy side of the martial arts. Unless, yeah, I mean, there's also a great audience for that, but in general. Yeah. You're right. And so right now I'm trying to, uh, on the TikTok is trying to so develop first the fan base and kind of guide. I got to teach people what they don't know. So right now I'm focusing on trying to grab people's attention mm -hmm. where I can start putting more application and principles out there. For sure. Yeah, because I noticed you also put out recently uh, a few like really short tutorials, just mm -hmm. very basic and is that kind of the the game plan you're going for like starting with small tutorials and then we're going more and more in depth as as you gain your your target audience more or yeah 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 i, I love to teach and i want people to be i'm 41 years old and i'm stronger okay. than i've ever been. i want people to understand that you do it right you can continue evolving not just mentally but physically as most people say once you hit like 30 you go down but mm -hmm. i i keep getting better stronger faster and in every way because I, I take care of myself and the way that I train I train very science based everything is focused on technique meaning that my body alignment is working in its natural structure because the body is only designed to move with a certain there's limits to the structure or movements mm -hmm. of the body so everything yeah. that I do like we're most just throwing Muay Thai kicks on on um tie shields and just going nah, nah, cranking 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 i'm like no you don't need to be continually cranking out hard kicks to hit hard if you understand having the full muscle control everything for me is muscle control if you have full muscle control over the technique you can do the technique as slow as your muscles can allow you bit by bit piece by piece then you don't need to train it fast it automatically comes fast because you have to in your muscle memory so everything that i do is i train very 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 unless i'm tricking or or wanting to explode most of my training is done as though i'm lifting very slow weights and i learned that through training with dancers everything is slow and controlled and has ice technique the proper body alignments yes that's interesting so did you cross train in dancing or is it something you just incorporated into your martial arts training or it's it's i learned it uh when i first moved to la i was doing acrobatic shows with doing my martial arts and i was always oh. working with with dancers i was on tour um so i would ask mostly the ballet dancers how they train because mm -hmm. there's ballet dancers are some of the most gifted athletes i've ever seen and they have the complete balance of flexibility and and strength and so a lot of the the ways that the russians were trained and taught in ballet i've incorporated a lot of those into martial arts do you feel like there are other kind of sports that could benefit the martial arts or do you think dancing and like ballet is the main i mean yeah do you know what i'm what i'm getting at like do i think that dancing is is the best sport to aid in martial arts yeah, one of the best. Like, do you know some other stuff? Or have you dabbled in some other stuff that would help you in your martial arts? Or I think that martial arts is like an alpha um, activity. And I think 
else would be like a subcategory. Like, I don't think soccer will help your martial arts. Basketball is not going to help your martial arts. But oh. martial, arts, soccer, martial arts will help your basketball. Martial arts will help your gymnastics. I think gymna- gymnastics and martial arts, gymnastics, martial arts, and dancing are like primary sports. Mm-hmm. Like th- those three will help every other sport, but those other sports okay. won't help. Well, something I also noticed on your Instagram is your technique, as you said earlier, with the body alignment and stuff like that, is very aesthetically perfect. Was that something you trained from the beginning, or did you first learn it like a combat application way to then relearn it for aesthetic? purposes um thank you for noticing my goal was to always perfect technique period it was that was always my goal Mm -hmm. to perfect technique and at first it was about the aesthetics but then as i got older and i realized the aesthetics look good because they actually work properly like full like if it's a sidekick heel aligned with the shoulder line with the hip align with the pivots everything for to be perfect your technique to be executed perfectly should also be aesthetically it should look perfect in application just as well that's 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 what technique that's the reason for technique and i get these arguments of a lot of the older guys like well if it works it works so what works for me doesn't i'm like yeah no it doesn't work that just because something works doesn't mean it's actually the right way lots of things like i could throw 50 baskets in a basketball hoop and make one does that mean that my shot works no so people say that technique especially when it comes to application well if it knocks someone out knock someone out i'm like yeah but maybe if you do it with precise technique it would take in less effort it would have been done more damage less damage to your body the amazing thing about judo is judo means um minimum efficiency to maximize to mm-hmm. maximize it's it, all about judo it's like they want to minimize your your throw the amount of work you put in to maximize your result and that's mm-hmm. that's be judo minimize to maximize and every martial art should be that way and that comes from proper technique okay that's really interesting that you don't make a, a distinction between like the aesthetic martial arts and the combat applicable martial arts because a lot of arguments i hear it's like that aesthetics only work for like kind of movies and ju- they just have to look good. They don't necessarily need to have power behind it or speed or anything like that. So I think it's really interesting that you say that it's just, it's the same. You should train it the same way. Like you should go for aesthetics first to yes. do as, as little damage to your body as possible, only to then figure out how to put power behind it and stuff like that. Correct. And other sports, other athletes, baseball coaches have, Pitchers have a, a, a coach checking their technique for pitching. Base, the hitters have a coach for batting. Golfers have a swing coach. Um, okay. runner, uh, sprinters have a coach specifically on technique. Like a lot of Usain Bolt, that guy was he's an amazing athlete. He focuses on technique. Mm-hmm. Sports are understanding the science involved with how the body works structurally to maximize the potential of the human body you have you have to use it right it's like putting bad car in a ferrari bad gas in a ferrari and expecting it to go fast technique good gas you focus on technique and that's gonna give you more more results but that it's people don't like training that hard because everyone wants to go hard and fast hard and fast and then they all get beat up as they get older knees hips whatever mm-hmm. but hard and fast is not you don't learn to be fast by training to go fast. You have to understand the technique. It's all technique, all of it. I see. Yeah, uh, kind of like the saying. Um, what was it again? Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Is that no? Slow is fast. It's one yes. of my favorite sayings, and it and it's and it's true. You know, and technique. Like people will try to hit hard. And, and not even land a clean shot. If you have technique, you can land a clean shot. If you have a clean shot, meaning precision, meaning you don't need to be swinging hard. It, it doesn't take that much to hurt somebody. It's about placement. It's timing and placement. It's not power. It's timing and placement. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. And how do you decide which techniques you train like the most? Is it based on efficiency, how they feel, or just level of mastery that you have with them? Or Yeah, I think it's just 
I, I'm very good at instinctually knowing what I need to work on. I don't think about it. I just, it just instinctually, I know what I, sh what I need to work on next. It's okay. I, has this automatic, um, automatic syllabus of what I need to do. Next. It just comes naturally. Yeah. That's really interesting. So you don't, so can I say it's like kind of dependent on how you, how the technique feels to you or? Um, yes, hundred percent. Yeah. When doing it, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But even the things that I feel like, uh, I think I'm, my sidekick's pretty good, but I still don't feel like I've perfected the sidekick. And that's been the, that's been my main, that's my holy grail since I was 10 was perfecting the sidekick. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I've probably done over a hundred thousand hours of trying to train the sidekick and it's still not to me perfect, but you know, mm -hmm. that's the great thing about arts is it teaches you that perfection is a goal, but it's never going to be obtained. I, I think it's a great thing to obtain too, but you have to understand that it'll never be accomplished. But by setting that goal of, reaching to be perfect that's how you're going to become your highest level of yeah. yourself i see that you can keep improving yeah you keep improving you don't settle and the only way of not settling is by the yeah. ultimate goal of perfection yes exactly so is it fair to say that the psychic is then your favorite technique to kind of drill or train or, or use or um when it comes to um Sparring the sidekick and the axe kick are my two favorite. I, I think that if somebody perfects a sidekick, that I think that's the one move in martial arts that if it, if there was ever a tournament of move versus move, I feel that whoever has perfected the sidekick will beat anybody else. Doesn't matter what anyone else has perfected the double leg takedown, whatever. I feel if you perfected the sidekick, mm -hmm. dominate. I feel it is the the most effective technique in martial arts okay and they have like a preference with the front leg or the back leg or is it just you should be front, both front, leg. front okay Lead with the front strong side uh, I, joe lewis had the was top my kickboxing black belt was taught by bruce trained with bruce lee and bruce lee taught joe strong side in front and i've always i i went in my videos and stuff i'm always southpaw mm -hmm. i actually and just training for me and sparring, I'm southpaw. I'm always right side in front. Okay. I see. Do you still spar a lot, or? Um, every once in a while, man. I I I do it for fun. I just don't. Of course. Don't feel like I need to be trying to prove myself of hurting people anymore. Um, lately, it's more I, I prefer to roll more, do more jujitsu sparring than than kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because I also read you are, you are, or you were, I'm not sure, a world champion in karate? Yes, I was in um, two, 2000, when I was in my, my early 20s. Okay, and what, what style was it? Was it like full-on kumite, kumite or um, point, point fighting? Right. Okay. Sport karate. Point oh, okay. yes, okay, I see. And is uh, that a style specifically, or is that the style? Because... Yeah, it was just so there's a circuit called NASCA. It's the biggest karate circuit in, in the world for sport karate. It's where all the tricking came from. Um, oh, yeah. And so I, I competed that for a, a few years. And mm -hmm. to me, when it comes to fighting, um, point fighting is the hardest style. It is the hardest style to master is point fighting. It's all intricate details of timing, precision, and, 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 and speed. And you can't, it teaches you to not make any mistakes. It's the whole thing is on. You make a mistake, game over. When it comes to kickboxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, like you can make mistakes, you can still come out on top, but point fighting teaches you to be flawless, to make no mistakes. Okay. I see. And was that is that the style that you got your black belt in? I mean, is it even possible to get a black belt in in point for, uh, sports no. karate or point karate circuit is open to all martial arts styles. Like it's not just oh, karate. I see. Okay. People come in. Taekwondo people come in. It's an it's an open. Oh, open, I didn't know that. 
yeah there are, there are open tournaments to where anyone can come in and use the use their their style of application in point fighting um and back in my day there were more now it's kind of turned into its own thing as ufc has you know I see, point, yeah. fighting, point fighting now is, is its own style but back in my day people were fighting fighting whatever your style was if you were taekwondo you're point fighting taekwondo if you're kung fu you're point fighting with your kung fu style didn't know that that's interesting and in what mm -hmm. specific style of karate do you have your black belt in um my black belt is in shotokan oh okay okay i see and have you trained in like other karate styles like goju ryu or i know yeah yeah a little bit of goju ryu um mm -hmm. but mostly been um Shotokan. Okay, and are those the forms that you still practice as well, or do you kind of mix them up also over different martial arts like Kung Fu forms? Nowadays, when I'm doing katas, I like to make up my katas. I like to be creative and make okay. up stuff right then and there. It's like, mm -hmm. um, even when I do my weapons, I don't stick to any set. I'll use some some of the same moves and patterns, but every, time, course, I'm, yeah. every time I drill kata, my goal is to drill a different kata to see and that is to push myself to see how quickly my mind and body can work together and transition and go from move to move flawlessly efficiently okay let's see and if you were to describe your training percentages like if you should divide your training into percentages how much percent would be like forms how many would be sparring how many would be drills or pad work can you give me like a uh, a rough um, I, I would say Hey, that's a good question. I've never really thought about that. I would say 25% of it is um, strength and conditioning with my martial arts, meaning slow, controlled, technical punches, slow, controlled, technical kicks, making sure that every muscle is working properly and efficiently and is being used and that there's no imbalances so just going slow and controlled mm -hmm. um i call anything conditioning that's about 25 um another maybe 15 to 20 would be taekwondo paddle kicks um jiu-jitsu is probably at 30 percent right now so we're way at 30 45 like 65 Tricking about 25%. Um, we'll have 10% left, I think. Yes. And then the last 10% would be my judo. And then making the connection back to your, like your online content with the tutorials and stuff like that. Do you also teach classes in real life? Or are you an instructor also? Or No, I perform in the entertainment business. I do stunts. Uh, I work in the film industry. Uh, I'm always oh. teaching. Each Everywhere I go, I'm teaching. I, when I train, I'm teaching. I have people come in all the time and train with me. So I'm always teaching mm -hmm. uh, somebody, but I'm not, I don't charge people for teaching. I'm not, it's not, it's my way of giving back to, to people. I run a small class on, on Sundays uh, of select students that I've known and had throughout the years, but that's my, that's my only class. Everything else is, entered through working with entertainment business and just teaching here and there whenever i lift weights and someone's trying to do martial arts i'm always that person to go up and help and, and give some kind of guidance That's so i'm always part of being a martial arts a martial artist since you have you, you have to always be teaching you need to be a teacher a student mm -hmm. for life and a teacher for life okay i feel that i feel that and do you like have um, any more aspirations in the film industry or are there specific things that you want to accomplish within that world? Um, or? Yeah, I all that I've had since I was 10 is a particular TV show that I created and um, I, I've been working towards the past couple of years, been getting, um, been making a lot of headway with it. It's just, uh, it'll happen in the next couple of years. It's just, it's a, it's a process. We'll put it that way, okay. but it's, I have an idea to, to to find who is the world's who are the world's greatest living martial artists, not okay. not just fighters, but who who are the world's greatest living 
male or female kids, adults who are the best of the best. I see. Not just fighters, you mean like just martial artists in the entire meaning of the... Correct. Right now, my job, my what I'm applying and pushing in my goal is to teach people the way of martial arts that's not about fighting. We have fighting has... You, you can be a martial artist and not a fighter and you can be a martial artist. You can be a fighter and not a martial artist and you can be a martial artist and not a fighter. You, the See. two are separate, but the two can be the same. Mm -hmm. But right now, everyone is thinking that martial arts is about fighting with the UFC stuff. And UFC kind of has brought the martial arts back to the forefront, but it's done, it's done a lot of harm. Parents don't want to put their kids into martial arts because they think that it's, that's what it is. And yeah. first and foremost, it should first be for the kids. But, you know, and I'm not hating on it because it does, it does serve, it does serve a valuable tool. There are many, like me, I don't like hurting people. I stopped fighting because I do not like hurting people. And there's lots of people like me that do not like punching somebody's face in. But there are people that need to get that animalistic instinct out. So it's great that yeah. the MMA gives them that version. Yeah, but, kind of controlled environment to do so. Yes, but I feel that that is the smallest percentage of people that actually want to do martial arts. Mm -hmm. I feel 90% of everyone else that wants to do martial arts wants to do it to better themselves. Not to fight, but to better themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what my, my goal is, is to bring martial arts to the forefront. That it will better no matter who you are, where you're from, or what your obstacles are. Martial arts will benefit your life. I don't I think that. I don't think there's a single human being on this planet that doesn't want to have more confidence or more respect for themselves or more self-love. Mm -hmm. And I feel that martial arts teaches those principles better than anything else. Anything else. To, it teaches you your own self-power and that's where confidence has to come from. I agree. I agree. I just got a notification that says I'm using the free version of Zoom. We only have five minutes left. And we can maybe do a part two if you'd like somewhere in the future. Sounds good, buddy. We can totally do that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm wondering, do you have kids? Uh, not yet. I look forward to the day when I do have kids. Okay. Um, I, I do want kids. I love kids. I love teaching kids. But I I, I need to... I, I want to finish my work first before before I, I, I make that commitment because I don't want to not always be there for my if I do something I have to do it right everything has to be done right to me whatever I perfect is that's the only way that I can do things is what I feel is the perfect way mm -hmm. I see that you're gonna love this question like if your kids would show interest in martial arts very early on with the goal to make him or her like a well-rounded martial artist what martial arts would you put them in first and what would you let them take on later? Just kind of roughly the structure that you would use to teach your kid martial arts. Like, how would you approach that? What styles first? Taekwondo. I feel that every if every exactly. parent first put their kid in Taekwondo because the you're not going to be able to grow as a martial artist unless you have full understanding of your legs. And Taekwondo, as you know, puts all the emphasis on the legs. I don't care how great you think you're going to be until you know how to use your legs. Mm -hmm. You're always going to your legs are our strongest tools. We walk on our legs. Footwork comes from the legs. Everything comes from the legs. And once you understand how to use your legs, it's easy to learn how to use your hands. When I started doing jujitsu, I didn't like how I was being taught. And then once I'm like, well, I'm just going to use what I know, what I was taught about my legs. And then I started using those principles into jujitsu. And that's when my jujitsu started really evolving. Mm -hmm. And, but you're not going to see a jiu-jitsu guy be able to go learn taekwondo quickly and easily. True. Very true. I regret that so much. I hesitated when I was little to go into a taekwondo school and I got scared right before I went in. So I went out again and I didn't start taekwondo and I regret that so much in my life. Well, it's never too late. It's never true. too late. Very taekwondo, true. It's an amazing, it's an amazing martial art. Yeah, that's true. I'm still hoping I can pick that up after I'm done studying and being in school. I hope I can still get that started one day. I'd love to. And then, like, uh, my final question that I ask everyone, um, I'm projected to have my first amateur boxing fight in, like, September, October of this year. 
And I was wondering if there was one piece of advice that you could give me, what would it be? Um, your first time, just take all the pressure off yourself and just go in there and have fun. Because if you don't go in there with the mindset to have fun, you're going to come out feeling like you lost something. If you go in with the if you go in with a learning mindset, a learning mindset backed by I'm just going to go have fun and learn, mm -hmm. you'll come out a success. You'll, you'll come out a winner. Don't, don't, don't focus on trying to make anything out of it other than just enjoying and having fun. You can put pressure mm -hmm. on yourself to continue that career. You can put the pressure on yourself later, but you only have one beginning, so enjoy the beginning. Just relax and have fun. I will for sure. Thank you. I'm really taking that to heart. And of course, be safe. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. That's like mm -hmm. that's my main style too. I don't also don't really like to punch people in the face. It just I find more comfort behind the meaning of boxing than the physical act itself. If that makes sense. So my style is very defensive naturally. So that's really what I'm working on. Good. Yes. Defense, you, 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 your offense will only be as strong as your defense. Exactly, exactly. Thank you very much for the interview. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, buddy. And I really hope we can do a part two somewhere in the near future. I'd love to do that. For sure, man. You know, it's, my goal is to just what I, I'm always going to be doing whatever I can to help martial arts, no matter how big or how small. I really so, appreciate that, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome, man. Have a good wonderful evening or day or whatever it is over there yeah it's 11 almost 12 o'clock at night for me so <laughs> all right get some sleep yes i will i will thank you all very right. much take care right, take care bye-bye